everyone welcome to week four so my fan my kids oh you might hear my kids they're taking baths right now so they might run in and be crazy um all right so for week four we're discussing good country people once again by flannery o'connor this is the final text that we're talking about for unit one so and as i say here in the introduction it's no surprise that this story is going to cover a lot of the same themes that we've gone through in the first few stories. We're talking about faith, the expectations we put on other people, how we relate to traditions from our past, how skepticism and rationalism relate to ideas of faith. Uh, all those things that we've discovered in Flannery O'Connor are once again present for this final story that we're exploring. Okay, so here's some key questions I want you to think about. Just like in A Good Man is Hard to Find, I want you to think about what is goodness and how are other characters defining goodness? Is Holga, and the, <laughs> I realize that's an interesting name, that's kind of an aspect of the story, is Holga's attitude toward her mother merited? Meaning, is, it, is she justified in her feelings that she has directed toward her mother? Why are we not? What is it that draws Holga toward her romantic interests and vice versa? What draws them together, uh, if that's what's happening? And what argument is the story making? And once again, just like all the other Flannery O'Connor stories, this is open to interpretation, right? And give yourself weight in this discussion. Your ideas are valid. Just because you might differ from the ideas, background, and context of Flannery O'Connor does not mean that your ideas of the story are less merited, okay? What the heck is going on at the ending? There's something that Mrs. Freeman says that kind of illuminates some other ideas about the story as a whole. So pay attention to Mrs. Freeman and what she is saying and see if you can kind of piece anything together, even before you look at any of the analyses or anything like that. Uh, and how do Mrs. Hopewell and Holga assert their superiority over others? Uh, because they both do, they both do, right? So see how all these people are interacting with each other and understand that this is a product of 1950s Southern America. And ask yourselves the usual questions that we've been asking throughout all this unit, right? How does this interplay with my idea of what it means to be an American, with my identity as a Southern American? Uh, all those great questions that we've been asking ourselves, okay? So once again, there's the same ebook that you've been working with the whole time. Here's a link to the lit charts analysis of it if, if you get stuck or need some help. Once again, please make sure that you read the story prior to diving into that because that might kind of lead your interpretation in a particular way that you might not have uh, unless you read the uh, analysis first. Don't, don't read the analysis first. I thought this was pretty cool. This is a 1960s short of the uh, short story. So Feel free to go ahead and watch that and see if you like their interpretation of it. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, now the other thing that we're doing this week, and I know this is going to be heartbreaking for y'all, there actually is not an assignment that is due this week. So instead, what you'll be doing is working on your first project. And here it is. Project one, description and rubric. So I'm going to go over this to give you a better idea of what it is that you need to do. All right, so... Flannery O'Connor project. You have two different options here, right? You can either write an essay, which is kind of the traditional version, or you can do some sort of artistic representation of the themes, ideas, whatever, of a particular story. Now, I also want to say this because I have gotten a couple of projects that are different than these, and I am open to you presenting the information and research in any ways that you think you can do that will render your knowledge learned, right? So uh, there's been a couple times where I've had students put together like a podcast that represented the information. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I've seen done. Uh, I've, had, I've had students put together like YouTube videos uh, that kind of reenact a particular scene in a modern format. There's all sorts of different ways you can do this. These are kind of the, the, um, the biggest ways that students represent the information. But if you have another idea, feel free to message me and we can talk through how you want to submit the project. Okay. All right. So all written portions to these assignments, pretty much all of them except one on here have a written portion, need to be submitted to Canvas. I'm going to open up the submission uh, file for that next week. All need to be submitted uh, through Canvas before the due date. All right. And that's not this upcoming Sunday, but the Sunday after. 
And once again, make sure that you're checking the dates that are on your syllabus and not necessarily the dates that you are seeing um, in this video because they could be different, all right? So what you've got to do, you got to choose a story from unit one. You can choose a good man is hard to find. You can choose the life you save may be your own. You can choose the river. You can choose good country people. So you're choosing one, one story. And then from there, you're going to choose one of the option represent, of representing uh, the knowledge that you've learned. I've had several students in the past not listen to directions and wind up doing all of them. Don't do that. You're just choosing one. Okay. So option number one is the essay option. Answer the following questions in a well-organized, carefully researched essay. How does your chosen story, whether it's good man, the life, the river, good country people, how does your chosen story reflect the core beliefs and ideals of Flannery O'Connor? How does the story respond to the significant historical and cultural elements of their day? And finally, what is your critical response to the story and its arguments? This assignment will require you to research your chosen story, its cultural relevance, and to craft your own critical response of the piece. Make sure to provide text evidence from their original writings, Flannery O'Connor, and credible outside resources to support your argument. Okay? So, essentially what you're doing here, you're going to choose the story, you're going to make an argument for how that story is a reflection of Flannery O'Connor's beliefs and ideas. Okay? Um, you're going to tell me how the story responds and interacts to different things that are happening culturally at the time in America. And then lastly, you're going to give me your own uh, critical take on the story, right? You like it, you don't like it, why are we not? Um, so those three things together. Now, the good news is, is that you've, you've already done a pretty big part of that with the responses that you've given uh, through your assignments. And I am more than happy if you want to take that assignment and expand it into a full length essay. You are more than welcome to do that, okay? So requirements is a 1500 minimum word essay. It needs to be put in MLA format. You need to make sure that you are quoting the short story itself. So I need to see quotes from the story. And your works cited page needs to have three credible outside sources gathered from the TCC databases that are also quoted in the essay. So you're going to have quotes from the story, but also quotes from the essay, okay? Or quotes from uh, the outside sources that you gather. If you are unfamiliar with using the TCC databases, I will send you a video this week that will remind you how to do it. And also I'll link you up with a uh, file that just kind of walks you through it as well. It's super easy. It sounds intimidating, but it's not. But hopefully you had a chance to do that in your composition courses. Okay, so that's the essay option. So the artistic expression option, y'all look at me in my eyes. Look at me in my beautiful chocolate eyes. If you are not an artistic person, don't do this. Don't do it. Just don't do it. You either need to write the essay or you need to have another means of representing this information, whether it's through a video or podcasts, something like that. But just, I've had way too many people, like I, I, this is not a joke, on notebook paper, like do crayon or something. Don't, don't do that, don't do that. All right, so create a visual work of art that explores the themes and ideas of your chosen story. Your primary goal as the artist here is to capture and articulate your interpretation of the story's argument and the story's cultural ideas as a product of its context in American history, right? So you're trying to capture that essence with a piece of visual art. So this is this goes beyond you just illustrating something that's happening, right? There's gotta be more to it. And I'll send out a couple examples this week if I can find them um, that my students have done in the past, right? So maybe it has a meaningful background or uh, an overlay of some sort of scene that you feel like is meaningful, that gives the story some context, or you know, newspaper clippings in the background that can help illustrate what's going on. I mean, there's all sorts of different ways you can do this. So basically, think through all the conversations and discussions we've had about the story. Think about the themes, the ideas, and the argument. How can you communicate those themes, ideas, and arguments with some sort of visual representation. So if you're stumped, if you're thinking there's no way I can do that, it's okay. This just might not be the, the way you, you, you do the project and that's fine. Okay, so with this artistic representation, you also need to attach an MLA formatted 500 word interpretation and analysis of your piece, 
incorporating uh, from the text a quote from at least one credible outside source that you found in the TCC databases, super easy, uh, that helps illuminate your piece, right? So you're free to use any type of medium here. It doesn't have to be paper or any type of, you know, pen, pencil, markers, pastels. I don't care what it is. Uh, as long as you demonstrate that you understand the text, you're going to demonstrate this through your use of color, medium, symbols, tone, and a sophisticated written interpretation. And, and this, I feel like, is pretty obvious, even though it feels abstract. You've put a substantial amount of work into the project. So if I look at your project and I'm thinking, okay, you took about a quarter of the time to do this, as your friend Billy did in writing the essay. Keep that in mind. I, I want to have a sense that you really poured a lot of effort into this in order to get the grade that you're looking for, whether it's an A or a B. Okay. All right. So that's another option. Now, this next part is another option altogether. So not the essay, not the artistic representation. Another option, a third option you can do is you can create a graphic novel. So this graphic novel, like the other artistic representation novel, is going to explore the themes and arguments of the chosen story. Just like in the other artistic representation, your primary goal is to capture and articulate your interpretation of the story's arguments and cultural ideas as a product of its context in American history. You must have an illustrated full color cover and at least 18 panels that span, that span eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. Three, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Three eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. And same thing. Make sure that I can see that you really understand the text through all the reasons that I just mentioned before, that you put a substantial amount of work into the project to where I feel like that anybody else that's writing an essay uh, put just as much time into it as you put into yours. Okay. So if you're doing a visual representation, whether it's the visual art or the graphic novel, um, just scan it or take pictures of it and upload it onto Canvas for me to see, okay? Now, beneath all of these things, I have different rubrics. I'll let you read that at your own perusal so you can see what I'm looking for for the A, B, C, D, and F project. Uh, and once again, if you have another idea, you don't have to do all the thinking for yourself. If you're thinking, I want to do a podcast episode, excellent. Let's talk it. Let's talk it through. I'll help you think up the criteria that you need for it, or if you want to do a song or whatever else it is that you're skilled at that you think can really uh, help you shine when it comes to representing the information that you've learned, I wanna help you do that, okay? So if you've got a better idea than art or uh, an essay, let me know. And I, I bet we can figure something out, all right? So no assignment this to this week. Make sure you're reading that final story and start working on your project. And I will kind of chime in with some project help and maybe some analysis help around Wednesday or Thursday this week. I hope you all have a delightful evening.